Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to weld these two together and hopefully that will give me enough material to make something like this. I've often felt like uh, making a cleaver but never had um, sort of wide enough material. Then it suddenly occurred to me the other day, why not just weld a couple together? So we're going to give it a go. So let's get it up on the bench, weld them up. Now I'm not going to use anything special, just an ordinary MIG with ordinary wire and we'll take it from there. I might do a test piece just for the cynics out there because I know there'll be some of you going, oh it's not going to work like that, you ought to be using special rods, blah blah blah. So I've left a nice gap there so I can get some good penetration so I'm going to go from the back so hopefully it won't bend too much. Let's see if we can get a decent weld on it. It's not too shabby. Nice and flat. Fairly straight. Nice bit of penetration. So I'm just going to run a bead over the top of that just to fill in all the little gaps. Sorted. See it's bent a little bit with the welding. I should have clamped it down I suppose but it didn't even occur to me. But it doesn't matter because we're going to heat it up and beat it about a bit anyway. It's still pretty damn hot so whilst it's still warm and I'm not wasting any energy I'm going to cut it out so I've just sort of loosely drawn it with my pen. There's no set design, I've, it's all just you know freehand and eyeballed. Oh, I love plasma cutters. I really want to get myself a CNC set up. Let's see if I get a bigger shot. I will try and do. Right, there we go. That's rough shape, and I mean rough. But you can see where I'm going with it. I'm going to heat it up and try and just shake that handle a bit to look a bit more like that one. And then grind off the welds. Flatten it all out a bit. I'm just trying to take the teeth down a bit. I just think it's easier to um, smack them down than try to grind them all off. It's nowhere near straight. I really should have ground the weld off at first, I think, but never mind. Let's do the handle. See if we can tidy that up a bit. Just like turning a shoe. It's better already, look at that. And that's literally just one run over the beak. 
So I'm just going to pull it up a little bit more because I didn't have enough material with the two rasps to get that handle up without bringing it up afterwards. You see what I mean? So I just gained a bit of height by pulling that up afterwards. So there you go. And we're sort of somewhere near. So there's no set rules, it's all eyeballed. And I'm going to put a little, as you can see, a little shape in the bottom there. I'm going to grind that weld off next, I think. the other side, it's a bit warm still. taken the, the sort of burrs off. It's still got a little bit of a lump in there, both sides, so just going to run it back through the forge again, which will do two things. It'll um, flatten it down a bit better and it'll get it up to temperature so we can anneal it. level as possible because I'm going to grind the whole surface of this so I want it as level as possible so I don't have to grind too much I still want to keep some of the um, file marks and marks from the file you know the, the teeth marks so there we go so I'm going to leave it on there now let that cool off naturally and that should anneal it enough for what I want to do with it anyway. And then we can start tidying it up a bit. I don't quite know what that's all about. Right, so now it's nice and cold. I'm just going to put a bit of shape in that bottom and tidy the whole thing up a bit. This is a 36 grit, I think, this belt on here. That should do the trick fairly quickly. I'm taking off both ends, but I also have got to take off some in the middle. get those teeth off. See those? That's what I I think I mentioned it on my last knife video. If you don't get those side teeth off and you come to sharpen it you'll get like a nasty ragged edge. I'm just tidying up as much as I can get to with this machine. bad. I don't think I can get much else. Right, I think I'm going to have to do that bit in there by 
on the by hand or with the die grinder. Let's start off by hand. all very well but I really think that bit needs um, the use of a bit of a power tool we're getting there but it's quite slow what bugger it get the power tools on it that's more like it that's working a treat that's one of those I don't know what they're called but like a sleeve goes on a rubber mandrel oh, that's working lovely I bought those to do the ram's head with to clean it up they're going to become very useful Good job. It's a bit better. Still got a bit of a sh yeah, not quite right there. Mm, it's not smooth enough. Gotta get that out. That's uh, offensive to the eye. That little shape there. to smooth it out a bit. about it it's much better it's still not quite right not quite happy with it but much much better yep yeah, nice like that now I've got to do the whole surface for that I'm going to put it on my six inch bent belt grinder and I've just got a couple of magnets to hold it with I'm just going to give it some beans. So I want to get it nice and smooth, but I don't want to take all of the um, marks off. I rather like the marks that were on the file. But I look at that, not bad at all. So, whilst it's in its annealed condition, before I forget, I'm going to drill the holes. The traditional hanging hole at the front, and three holes in the back. I should work out where the handle's going to go. I'm going to have three rivets in the handle. I'm just eyeballing it. 
you know, it's not rocket science. Let's go and find the appropriate size drill. This is the bit of brass I'm going to use for the rivets. That is 5 mil. Let's see if we can find ourselves a 5 mil drill. Apologise if you're hearing noises in the background, but of course with this lockdown, all the neighbours are about, which is slightly irritating. It drills nicely when it's um, annealed. And I'm putting this, this is about a, I think it was about 11 or 12 mil hole. Again, it doesn't really matter. But that's too short, I couldn't reach. That's why I had to put a block in there. Ragged edges. Alright, so there we go. Now then, let's. I've just blacked up the uh, edge with a sharpie. I'm just using a four and a, well, it's a 4.2 mil drill because it's about 4.2 mil thick now. Now that I've ground it. Now that angle should be like that according to my book on cleavers it should be something like 25 degrees which is ridiculous so I'm going to take it off shallow then take it sharper just for the last little bit I struggled a bit to get it to fit on here so I've had to use various different clamps because it's not really ideal for a cleaver it's really designed for knives you can see it's only just touching the top of the platen so we'll see how it works well, it's sort of working It's coming up quite nice. Let's turn it round to the other side. And the reason that cleaver angles are so steep is because it has to cut through bone. If the angle is too shallow, so you get a very long, thin cutting edge uh, they reckon that cutting through bone will can actually bend it so it has to be a very steep angle and not very sharp so don't expect me to be cutting paper or anything with this I'll just swap to the finer grit just to put that was still the 36 this is a 240 We'll do for now. It's looking quite nice. So, I've done both sides now. I don't want to bore you with it. I don't know if it'll focus. I've got quite a nice edge there. Focus, focus, there we go. That's pretty nice. I'm pleased with that. And then what I shall do is just put a very shallow cutting edge on at the end. So now let's get it into the forge and heat treat it. I'm going to use my gas forge for this one. So it'll be easier to control the overall temperature. So, 
it's been in there a few minutes now I actually turned it down quite low I've checked it for magnetism and the beauty of doing it in the gas forge is I could keep the the handle part of it a l less hot so hopefully that won't be as hard come on focus there you go come out the oil it's nastily covered in carbon and crap out the oil don't know why it's not stuck up there so we're going to give it a clean up before we temper it and I'm going to use this this wheel so I don't know what it's called but if you look in my Amazon pages there's some on there this one's I think about 180 grit it's a bit like a scotch bright but not quite and it's damn sight cheaper than a scotch bright when I work a treat I use it for all sorts of things it gives a lovely satin finish on a lot of jobs do it there you go that's just about how I'm gonna leave it I don't like full polish so we're gonna get that home this time I'm, I'm gonna anneal that or t temper that in my oven at home after the balls up I made in the last knife I'm gonna try and do that I'm still yet to figure out what I'm gonna use for the handle I haven't found anything. I've been skip diving, but I haven't found anything yet. So that will come eventually. So we're now at home. I'll stick the oven on. Get it warmed up. I'll have to have a little look and see what the equivalent of 350 degrees is in English. All right, it's 176. So we'll wing it a bit. I put it at 150 because my oven tends to be a bit hot but I've got a little thermometer in there anyway so I can check it before we stick it in right we're up to temperature I had to turn it up a little bit because it was too low and now it's a little bit too high it's nearer 400 but I've dropped it down again so that will be somewhere in the ballpark so we're going to set this for two hours. See how we get on. And there we go. Well, that muck is on there. So, see you in two hours. As if by magic, two hours is gone. That looks a rather nice brown colour which is what we're aiming for difficult to see in this light, I'm sorry about the lighting in here the, the lights are all behind me but you can see that the actual sort of cutting edge is a slightly darker brown right nicely quite uniformly along the bottom there which is lovely the whole thing's brown but the cutting edge is just that little bit browner that looks pucker so I think we've done a nice job there I'm going to let it cool down on the chopping board just before I do that's something I forgot see how straight it is and that is pretty damn good not bad at all and on the back there it looks a little bit bent but that's I think the way the handle is that ain't bad at all pleased with that okay so we're back in the shop before I start cleaning this up or doing anything else to it there's a couple of things I want to do and that is try and figure out if I can use part of this antler now this was given to me a while ago, quite some time ago now. I don't know what it's from, I can't remember. But thanks Mick, that's uh, going to be used at last. It's a big heavy old beast. And I don't know how sort of solid it is as to whether there's going to be enough 
sort of meat in there to to use it as a handle but I'm going to give it a go and I've identified the bit I'm going to use it's this bit here it's nice and it's wide enough it's got the shape and it's not too thick it's sort of oval whereas a lot of the others are round so anyway that's one thing the other thing is I was going to do a test piece for the for the uh, cynics out there Goody, goody, lardy, gardy, namby, hoity, wishy, pamby, toity, washy, gardy, lardy, know it all, public school, stiff up a lip. But I managed to find out the bin the piece that I actually cut that out of, so no one can say I've done it differently or anything like that. So I'm going to stick this in the vise and see if it'll break. I think that'll be a big enough hammer. Something's gone. But it ain't my world. Look at that, the world hasn't shifted. Nothing. That snapped the actual rasp. So I think that will satisfy the cynical of you. It will do for me, that's for sure. Right, so let's cut this particular piece off. I don't quite know why I've decided to do it left handed. It feels pretty solid. I know some of the antlers, like some of the stuff I use that I get from over here, it's very soft in the middle. It's sort of like, um, almost like a marrow in the middle. This feels pretty hard all the way through. Alright, let's take a little look. Alright, if this will focus. Come on, focus. There you go. You can see what I mean. This looks a little bit spongy, but not anywhere near as bad as the stuff we use. So all I can do is try it. So I've sort of basically drawn a rough shape on it from the handle. I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. Not much, just enough to make it a little bit more handleable. putting a flat on it all the way along the bottom so that hopefully when I split it down the middle it will ride fairly evenly on the table. Jack Horn always comes in hand as a pusher. Nice, it looks fairly hard inside. The problem will come when I um, try and shape it down to the handle, whether it or down to the, the blade, or the steel of the blade, steel of the handle. Get it right in a minute whether there'll be enough strength left in what I don't file away. We'll soon see. So anyway, I'm just drilling it. As you can see, obviously.
Alright, a couple of them drilled. Let's see if we can put them together. I've cut the pins, just three little bits of brass that I showed you earlier. I've got the epoxy. And this is a little trick I learnt some time ago, which makes epoxying stuff almost mess free. Just a little Ziploc bag. Doesn't have to be a tiny one, it's just this was the first one I grabbed hold of. Squirt your epoxies in. And it's just a case of zip the top up and squish away. Squish to your heart's content. Mixes up a treat. Obviously if you're in a small bag then it uh, doesn't go everywhere and you can keep uh, most of it together. Otherwise if you use too big a bag you will lose some of it. So a small bag is quite a good idea. Right, I'm going to call it a day at that. I've just put some masking tape over the blade just to make it easier to hold and so I don't damage it or cut myself or whatever. Now just with a pair of scissors, just snip the very corner of your bag off and you can use it like an icing bag. Works a treat. I'm just going to spread it around. Do the same on the other side. Right, now I'm just going to clamp it up and leave it to set. So, we're now two days later. I didn't come in yesterday, so it's had a good plenty of time to dry. All looks nice and set. No real gaps. I've got a little one at the front, but nothing too much. So I'm just going to rough it out with the angle grinder to start with. See how we go from there. Oh, this is dusty. I'm going to do this on a regular basis. I think I'd have to uh, invest in some some sort of extraction. Oh. I suppose I could have got some of it off with a bandsaw, but hey ho. Right, Poof. room's full of it. And of course you realise it stinks. I'm now just going to try to get a bit more off of this drum sander on the die grinder. I've got my old vacuum out, see if that will take some of it out of the way. Do with making myself a holder that will hold the vacuum in place while I can use two hands. Make life easier. Right, 
And that's about as much as I'm going to do with power tool. The tools. I'm going to try and do a bit of all the rest by hand now. It won't be quite so messy. A little bit more controllable. Feels nice already though. No, it's quite a nice shape. Pleased with that. That's quite taking quite a nice little bit off. So I suddenly realised I've got the file invoice that I made a few months ago. I've never used it yet. So this is its maiden voyage. It wasn't really designed for anything this big, but it seems to be working quite well. Holding it nicely. The only movement I've got is from the clamp not being particularly tight on the vice, uh, on the bench. Other than that, that's held that a treat. Just gonna go for some. A bit of 240, I think that's it. No, 280 grit. Take the filing marks out. And so on the other side. lovely. So I'll try and get all the uh, glue off the metal of the handle there. It's a bit sticky. The same on this side. I'll make sure all the glue's off. nice. Finish off with a bit of 600. I don't think we're going to go much further than that. 600 I think will be ample. So that's just about it. You can see it's come up with a little bit of a sheen on there. Not bad at all. I'm quite pleased with that. Very nice. The only downside is that these soft bits or softer bits that I was worried about in the, the beginning seem to have taken in the, I think it's the, the filings from the, the, the back of the handle there from the, the metal. I can't seem to get them out. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that. But hey ho, you live and learn. So now we've unveiled it. I've just given it a quick wipe over. It's not very nice in this light. The lighting in this workshop is appalling. But I think you get the idea. The overall impression is quite appealing. I think you can see the handle has a, a bit, a bit of a dull sheen on it, which is quite nice. Don't want it too shiny, otherwise it will slip out your hand. And I'm a little bit disappointed in those two hammer marks towards the handle, just above the join there. But other than that, I'm really pleased with it. It feels lovely in the hand. It's really nice and comfortable. It's well balanced good size oh, come on focus anyway and it's straight which I was surprised about you can just about see the sort of taper I've got on the blade there oh, nice let's get it home see what it looks like there alright 
So I've got it home and it looks a little bit better in this light, but it's still not brilliant, the lighting in here. And unfortunately, I've got nothing really to cut with it. Being in this lockdown, I can't just nip down and get some lumps of meat. So I'm going to have to make do with an old cabbage. Let's see what happens. There you go. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.